We are in a series called Help, I'm, and we are basically talking about every week different things that we may be struggling with or different things that uh, we as Christians uh, need to learn to do or get better at. Um, This week, we are going to talk about offense. And so the title of the message is Help, I'm Offended, right? Help, I'm Offended. And offense is something that I don't think oftentimes we hear about by, like, like, you know, like how on TikTok we have all the Karens like, I'm offended or blah, 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 right? But see, here's the thing. Offense is the gateway to unforgiveness. And so basically, we're really talking about unforgiveness. But offense is the, start, is the starting point to um, unforgiveness. And so what you can do with offense is offense is, is it's funny because you can either hold on to the offense and allow it to control your life, or you can have the option to just get rid of it. Because see, when we, when we harbor offense, the offense becomes unforgiveness, and then unforgiveness becomes a throne to anger and hatred. When you are not able to forgive someone, your forgiveness keeps you back from your purpose. So if God is trying to call you to do something, but you start harboring unforgiveness, you're not going to be able to fully walk out and live what he's called you to do, right? And so I have a funny story about that because, um, yeah, I have funny stories, I think, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so I have a story. Uh, I was getting ready to write this or whatever, um, and I tried to, and I literally, I can't write it. Like, like writer's block, it's not a thing. Like, I, I, I can't get it, right? And so I'm praying to God. I'm asking God, God, why can't I write this message? Like, I'm trying to t- talk to your people about uh, unforgiveness. I'm trying to tell them what's, what, like, what it, whatever it is you need me to tell them. Um, why can't I get anything written down? And he says, you're trying to write about something that you're still struggling with yourself, Right? And so that's a, uh, what I had to do is I was talking to God. I said, okay, God, well, if I'm, if I still have someone I haven't forgiven, who have I not forgiven? Right? Literally, like, this is like, this is a God thing because like this would not have happened if God was not real. But as soon as I asked him who it was I wasn't forgiving, a a notification on Instagram popped up where it's like so-and-so posted something new and it was literally their name. Right? I'm like, yeah, but they kind of they kind of hurt me. I'm talking to God. I'm like, they hurt me last time, or they did this to me last time. I can't forgive them. He said, well, God said either you're gonna forgive them or you're not gonna be able to walk in purpose. And oftentimes, I feel like we are harboring something. Maybe it may be um, you broke up with that person and they got right back with this other person, and now you're like, well, what the heck? Or maybe maybe it's it's that parent left and now you're you're like, well, I don't even want to have anything to do with them. Or I hate them. I want them to, I wish the worst on them. But as Christians, we are not called to wish, wish bad stuff on people. We're wish, uh, but we are called to love and have compassion towards others, right? And so the weight of unforgiveness will keep you back from your purpose. And so what I did is I was just like, I was, I was mad at God for a second because I really, I don't want to forgive them. I don't want to do that because like um, they did stuff to me. I don't want to forgive them. But um, I was like, all right, God, fine, whatever. I'll, I'll forgive them. So I go and I write, I write this little like mess. I text them. And I'm like, hey, I don't know if you're mad at me, but I was kind of mad at you. Um, I'm, I'm going to forgive you. Even though, even though you really didn't really do anything towards me, but I took it as something else, I'm going to forgive you. Now watch this. As soon as I hit the mess, like the delivered button, immediately there was like ideas like on, on top of ideas, on top of ideas, on top of ideas that I was, like, I was able to just click and like start writing this sermon, right? So... As soon as, it hit, or as soon as the little thing said delivered, I got delivered, right? That's a little, that's a little, that's a little cheesy for you, but um, forgiveness brings deliverance, deliverance, and you cannot have deliverance without forgiveness. And so I want to show you a quick illustration. Um, Riz, I need you. Landon, I need you. And um, who else is strong? Um, Malachi, can you come here? Okay. I need, I need, I need, I just, like, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to grab the football players right quick because I know that um, they can really pull me. Um, I don't weigh a lot, but yeah. Okay, so this one I'll shoot. I want to show you, a, I want to show you an illustration on what forgiveness or unforgiveness actually does, right? So I want y'all just, I want y'all to keep me back. Like, I'm going to try and walk around and I just want y'all to hold me back. Like, like I don't want, I don't want to move, all right? Y'all got to keep me back. All right, so look, look, when you, when you try to, when you have unforgiveness in your life, and you want to go and live out the purpose and calling of God, it becomes a little shirt, man. If, you, like, if you're trying to live for the purpose of God, what God has called you to do, but yet you have unforgiveness holding you back, and you go to try and raise your hands and worship and say, oh yeah, God, you're a mighty God. You're awesome. You're great. But I can't even raise my hand to worship, right? You guys have a seat, right? You cannot live in unforgiveness 
because unforgiveness holds you back from your purpose, right? So thank you all. That, that was awesome. That, that, I, I didn't expect it to be that hard, but it was bad. Okay. Um, but that's a, that's a representation of what unforgiveness does to your life. When you try to live and what God has called you to do, when you try to raise your hands in worship, when you try to do anything that God has called you to do, but you have unforgiveness harboring in your life, you cannot lift your hands in worship. You cannot accomplish what God is being done. Y'all saw me? I couldn't even walk over here. Like, this, they had me back. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I could take one step. That's it. This foot was not moving any, any more forward, right? And so that's what happens with unforgiveness. But there's a thing, there's a thing. Um, remember how I said the offense, uh, there's an option with offense? Well, here, let me, let me show you how to, let me, uh, let me expand on that option. Offense can either be picked up or placed down, right? And this is how you place down offense. Someone comes up to you and says, hey, you're ugly. Okay. 1 Peter 5, 7 says this, exactly. 1 Peter 5, 7 says this. It says, casting all your cares, all your worries on God, for he cares about you with his deepest affection. Um, what does that mean? It means that whatever you're going through, you can give it to God. Every, this is, I think that's the amplified version of the Bible. I love that version of the Bible because it expands more on whatever it is. When you're trying to study the Bible, it, it, it expands even more. But look, whenever you, whenever you have a fence, your option is to either, you know what, I'm going to hold on to this and remember exactly what you said at this time and this day and this moment, or I'm going to give it to God and say, you know what, but God has called me. He has said, I am a child of God. He is for me. He, he loves me. So either I can allow the words of others affect me or I can allow the words of God affect me, right? And oftentimes I feel like we allow the words of others affect us rather than allowing the words of God affect us, right? And so offense, again, is the seat to unforgiveness and unforgiveness becomes a throne to anger and hatred, now, there are two things I feel like as I'm studying this, there are two things that I feel like we don't forgive the most. The first thing we don't forgive is others. The first thing we don't forget is others. Why don't we forgive others? Because we oftentimes want to make this excuse, well, they hurt me, or they said this to me, or they did, they did that to me, right? Or did, yeah, yeah. And so we oftentimes try to make these types of excuses and um, we oftentimes make these excuses and not give it to God. But this is, this is crazy because Jesus was killed by others, yet he freely forgave them, right? Jesus was hung up on a cross by others, but on that cross, he forgave, right? So if Jesus can forgive, why can't you forgive? If Jesus was, if Jesus was whipped and he was, uh, buried, or he was nailed on a cross, like physically he was hurt. Why can't, why can't he forgive, but we can't? And this is, this is what, this is what Jesus does is we can, we, we even see that Jesus does this. He goes on the cross and he literally goes out to God saying, father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He is literally casting on what is, whatever is happening. He's saying, father, like he, with all of his anguish, all of it, he's saying, father, forgive them. Father, right? And oftentimes when we are hurt by others, we need to call out to God saying, Father, they, they're hurting me. They're doing this to me. I need, you to help. I need you to forgive them. Help me forgive them. The second thing we don't forgive, and if we're being completely honest, is ourselves. Ourselves. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean, you could have been doing something like, like with me, when I'm preaching, I'll go back and I like to watch the videos. I critique, I critique myself a lot. Um, when I preach the foundational change message, I critiqued myself a lot. Like I was, I was, I had like a pen and paper and I was just like writing down every mistake I did, right? And I was getting so mad at myself. But what I realized is I can't be mad at something that I was never meant to control in the first place, right? And oftentimes we're getting mad at something we did when in reality, that was something that God, need, God needed that to happen. Because after I preached that message, I heard from a bunch of people that it was great. I didn't think it was great, but a bunch of people were like, oh yeah, that was great, that was awesome. I'm like, okay, cool. But um, we need to, instead of, um, instead of critiquing ourselves, instead of saying all this, we need to realize that it's not our fault. Half the time, it's not our fault. And we need to stop blaming ourselves for things that were never meant for us to stop in the very first place. And so um, God, uh, God spoke to me on this, and he said that if he can forgive me for the things that I did, then surely I can forgive myself. If God can forgive us of the things that I did, then I can surely forgive myself. Because God has called me to something far greater than allowing, like, 
I have been called to something so much higher. You have been called to something so much higher than you just staying down in unforgiveness or staying down alone by yourself, critiquing yourself or doing all this to yourself. And so remember that offense is something that is it, it's small. It starts off tiny, but it can grow. All right? Offense is the seat to unforgiveness, and unforgiveness is the throne to anger and hatred. So with all of that, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you blessed us with. God, I pray for all the people in this room. God, God, I just pray that you put your hands around them. God, I pray that as they walk out and through their lives, that God, I pray that you, you help them with the offense that they may, may feel. Whatever someone says, if someone were to say something to them, God, I pray that they take it to you and they, allow, and they uh, give them the strength allow, and allow them to forgive. God, guys, teach us in all we do today. In your name we pray. Amen.